I'm listening for is not just the president's language, but does he turn any of that harsh rhetoric into actual action? Or does this administration continue on the path that it's... I mean, that's the big question. What's clear is that this is an inflection point in the relationship and that we've seen the president grow increasingly frustrated and the death of these seven aid workers has set off a new wave of anger within the administration. And clearly the president's anger has reached a new fever. Far, the administration has been steadfast in defending their approach that Israel has a right to defend itself. They're going to continue to send their weapons without any conditions. But you have some prominent Democrats, including the Democrat from the Senator Chris Van about the strategy he's taking. So what yeah, Diane, I mean, look, we're in an election year, and even though the National Security Council says the president doesn't take political considerations into account when he's making national security decisions, the reality of the matter is that he's facing some serious primary election states. But I have spoken to Democratic allies who say, look, if there's no change, significant change in the landscape of this war come November, this is a serious threat to the president. And I've spoken to leaders of the Arab American, Palestinian American communities who've been par a part of these movements. Movements, and they say even though they consider themselves Democrats and they don't want Trump to be elected, they can't in good conscience vote for President Biden if there's no change. They say they will just leave it blank, even with the knowledge that that could help Trump win. But that is what they say they're going to do. They say they're not going to forget this come November. Senior White House correspondent Selena Wang, thank you.